Hi, my name is Sebastian and I'm studying at the University of Sydney in Australia, but I'm here on exchange from University College London in the United Kingdom. When I initially moved to Australia in late July 2019, a lot of things went wrong. I'm here to give you some advice on what you can do to minimize things going wrong and also what you can expect if really literally everything just goes wrong. So a little background, before I went uh, abroad, I had to do a couple of things. I had to apply for a visa, I had to book my flights, which I had to do in advance because they can get quite expensive. So I'd recommend doing that kind of one or two months before you leave uh, at a minimum. Then I had to pack my bags and actually get on the plane and move my life over to another continent. That's what was supposed to happen, but this happened instead. I think I was quite unlucky, but at the same time, I could have been a lot more prepared. So I'm here to tell you my story and also sort of what I learned from it personally and what you can take from it as well. This is sort of the brief overview of what happened. I packed my bags, I had to move out of my flat in London, and I tried to get everything in order as, um, as well as I could. So I actually took the Piccadilly line uh, from my home in London to Heathrow Airport. And to be fair, I wouldn't really recommend doing this. As you probably already know, tubes in London are generally delayed. My tube was no exception. I got to the airport a little later than I expected. It was still fine, but um, it caused me a lot of stress. I actually made four journeys to the same airport counter. In the first journey, they told me that my was overweight by one kilo. This meant that I had to put a lot of stuff from my checked in luggage into my hand luggage, which actually ended up saving my life. More on this later on. When I went back to the same check in counter, they told me that my flight was actually overbooked and that I had to go somewhere else to pay for an extra luggage. I went to that other place, but then I realized that I only had like 10 minutes before my check in actually closed. So I alerted some Heathrow officials and I explained the situation to them, and they were actually quite nice. They wavered my bag and they just let me go into security straight away. When I got on the plane, however, we were just sat there for a while and it just kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed until eventually the pilot announced that the flight had actually been cancelled because of weather conditions. There were no more flights leaving Heathrow in that direction anymore which meant that I missed both of my connecting flights and they basically told me that I was rebooked on another flight leaving the next day. I went back to the airport the next day. Again, I went by tube but I actually allowed myself a lot more time than I did the day before. When I got to Sydney 24 hours later, I was actually not really surprised that my bags didn't show up. But in the end, I got my bags. They looked like this. One of the zippers had just snapped open because I had put so much stuff into it. But I survived and now everything's good and I actually learned a lot. So my first tip for study abroad students is to get travel insurance. Even though you think you might not need it, I think it's always worth getting it. And especially if it's given to you by your university, I'd recommend having a look at what the policy actually entails so that you actually know what you can do when you lose your stuff. The second thing I'd recommend is to weigh your bags before you leave the house. This is a pretty common and standard procedure, but I didn't do it, and it meant that I got really stressed out at the airport. It's just a really easy way to avoid your bag being overweight. My third tip is to take photos of your luggage before you close them up and pack them up. This will come super handy if you actually end up losing your luggage. It just makes life super easy. If you don't need it in the end, you can literally just delete it once you get your bags, but it just saves you a lot of time in the future if something does go wrong. My fourth tip is to pack as much essential stuff as you can in your hand luggage. Initially, I didn't do this, but when I was told to repack my bags, I actually put a lot of essential stuff into my hand luggage which really, really saved me when I got to Sydney. I had initially put extra shirts, extra underwear, and extra socks, but I actually added all my electronic device chargers, like my laptop charger, my phone charger, my camera charger. If I hadn't had that when I got to Sydney, I would have had to buy it when I arrived. So actually, it was really, really useful, and actually, it helped a lot. My fifth tip is to pack a lot of snacks and water because the food that you might get on the flight is obviously not the best, especially if you're going to a place like Australia, it's a long, long flight. Part of that I think also means bringing sleeping things like a sleeping mask or maybe like earplugs so you can actually sleep on the flight. I know it might be really hard to sleep on a flight, but if you actually manage to do it, it makes the journey seem so much shorter and also it makes adjusting to the local time zone so much easier, which brings me on to my next point. What I did when I got on my flights was change my watch and my phone to the local time of the place I was about to arrive in. It just meant that I kind of was aware of when I should try to sleep or stay awake in order to kind of adjust to the local time zone and all that kind of stuff. And lastly, before you actually make it to your final destination, I would definitely research transport uh, from the airport to your accommodation or wh wherever you're staying. I was actually able to get a shuttle bus which was arranged by the University of Sydney specifically for exchange students. And it just made the whole process of arriving, 
so much easier, especially given the fact that I was so tired because I just lost all my bags and I had to file a report and pass customs and all that kind of stuff. Even if your university doesn't offer a shuttle bus, just look at taxis or public transport or even just where the airport is located in relation to your accommodation because it'll just make things so much easier when trying to navigate a new city for the first time. So those are my tips, I hope they help. I'll definitely say though that once you go abroad and you make yourself settled and you make yourself at home, all the difficulties that you had along the way really become quite meaningless um, because you're actually living such a great experience. Thanks for watching and good luck!